yes. So anyway, those are our two announcements again. And um, if, oh, what is this? Uh, this week I bought the complete topical guide to the Bible. I'm excited for this new series. Oh, great, Laverta. Great. Thank you. Um, I have to talk to you more and get learn more about that. So uh, the two announcements, because I, I started the recording a little bit late, but real quick, the two announcements that I just shared are a reminder about subscribing to the Wisdom Stable YouTube channel. Uh, we have 44 videos up there now, and they're categorized uh, the playlists and, um, you know, have at it, share with your friends, uh, your, your loved ones. Um, it's there. Uh, second announcement real quick is uh, starting on February 1st, which, by the way, will mark our two-year anniversary for Wisdom's Table. We have been here two years. It's, it's flown by. Um, but we will start a new series, an in-depth series on uh, uh, Christian marriage, godly Christian marriage, uh, wives' roles, husbands' roles, Holy Spirit's role, and um, why this and I encourage single women, married women, and women who uh, never plan to be married or never married again, why all of us should uh, make plans to, to uh, uh, come to those studies. It's going to be good. All right, any questions on any of that? Okay, as I said at the top, um, and I'll repeat it for those I'm watching the video, that this, this is part two of our little mini series on seven reasons why truth really matters. And so for quick review from last time, uh, we talked about, um, well, we're gonna look at seven reasons why. Uh, we started, we looked at the first four, I believe, and I'll, I'll uh, review those in just a second. Um, but we want to not just, okay, why does it matter? Why does truth really matter? It matters for, our lives and how we apply God's word um, and in every area of our life, marriage, parenting, conducting ourselves at work, um, you know, our relationship with Christ, how we operate in our relationship with Christ in terms of worship, prayer. I mean, every single area of life, witnessing, um, it all has to be based upon, grounded on the foundation of the truth. Um, and we, so we looked at that First, we looked at the English definition of the word truth. So I uh, looked at dictionary.com. I looked at uh, Merriam-Webster's dictionary. Um, and so uh, truth is defined as, um, and by the way, truth is a word uh, that is, that is an, in some form or another, appears to at least 234 times in the word of God. So... Dictionary.com defines truth as that which is in accordance with fact or reality. That which is in accordance with fact or reality. Um, the true or actual state of a matter. Conformity with fact or reality. A verified or indisputable fact, proposition, principle, um, and then it's truth is an actuality or an actual existence. And then Merriam-Webster just defines truth as fact, actuality, the body of true statements and propositions, the property of being in accord with fact or reality. So you take all that together is basically truth is what matches up in, in accordance with what is fact and what is reality. Um, and by the way, I, I should have mentioned this just to put a pin there. My video, I'm not sure why Zoom is doing this to, to my video. Um, it's doing it a little bit to events as well. I'm not, so I'm not sure what that is, but I appreciate everyone's patience with that. And um, hopefully it's not distracting you as much as it's distracting me. But we prayed about it. God is good. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. Um, then uh, let's turn real quick to John 17, 17. And uh, we want to look at what truth is in the Bible. This is a Bible study. <laughs> we want to know what the Bible has to say. Um, and while we're doing that, let me uh, let someone in. So turning to John 17, 17. 
And if you're there, say I'm there. Hallelujah. Nobody I'm there. Knows. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> <Lisa>. <laughs> um, first, let's all say hello to Samaya. I want to make sure I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Hello, Samaya. Hi. Hi. Also want to make sure that, that you can hear us. So if you can just say, hey, then we know. Okay. I'm, I'm... <clears throat> oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we heard you clear in your throat. You okay? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so nice to meet you. Nice Sorry. to meet you as well. <laughs> Sorry uh, about my video. It's just acting weird. Yeah, I see the. Can you please send me the link again? I have a friend who want to come in too. Yeah. Okay, can can you forward her the um let the, me see, I'll try. Oh, uh Sherry or Lisa, somebody can put the the uh, meeting ID and the um what is it? The password. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Loberta. Okay, um, I'm, I'm gonna send it yeah. to you. Well, what what happened to me? I can't. Okay. You okay? All yes, right. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry, let, let me let Sharice in and then we'll keep going. So we are looking at John 17, 17. Um, and because we, again, we want to know, okay, we've got the English, the English definition of the word truth. What is truth in the scriptures? As I, as I mentioned, the word truth is, appears at least 234 times. Truth, truthful, some form of the word truth. In John 17, 17, um, we're just pulling that one as an example. It says, um, Jesus is always look at scripture and, is, and read it in its proper context, okay? But just for the sake of Bible study, we're just going to look at the, the, uh, the one verse and Jesus is talking, he's praying to the Lord, to his heavenly father. And then he says in verse 17, uh, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth sanctify them meaning the disciples by your truth father your the father's word is truth so that is our foundation as christians right your word is truth and it is the burden of anybody it's on the burden of uh, of those that would deny that the bible or god's word is truth that would have to prove that's right. oh no 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 that's not true this is true um, I'm going to go with the one who said, you know, destroy this temple in three days and, and then I'll raise it up and then did it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to go with, with him <laughs> before anybody else's opinion. And I'll, I'll elaborate on that for a second in a, in a minute, but John and here, uh, John 17, 17, your word is truth. The, the Greek word, the new Testament was written in, in Greek and, uh, Ara Aramaic, um, but the Greek word is transliterated, and then spell these letters, A-L-E-T-H-E-I-A. -E -E Aletheia, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Um, and here's what it means. I got this from Strong's Concordance. Um, excuse me a second. Okay. Reality, the manifest unconcealed essence of a matter truth is the reality lying at the foundation of a righteous example truth is pure unadulterated reality okay so it's very similar to to what we just uh, understood from um the merriam webster dictionary and from dictionary.com that's also uh, oh. We'll say hello to Nicole when she her audio comes up. I always like to, it's important. That, you know, you guys are family to me because we have the blood of Christ uh, in common, even if we've never met each other before, some of us. But I always like to make sure we say hello to everyone and, and take that moment when they jump in, take that moment to say, hey, hi, Nicole. Hi, Shaleen. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Vivi and Shaleen. Hi, everyone. Hi. Okay. Great. Thanks, Ruth. I must Thank be you. the. I'm sorry. I must be the black sheep. Oh. Why, Vet? Because you didn't say hi, Vet. Oh, Vet. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. 
Hi, hi, Jeff. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I think I did say hi, but I was also trying to deal with your your husband was still trying to get you connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did. I don't okay. think she was. And you connected. know what, Yvette? Thanks for speaking what? up. Thank I you. I won't do it anymore. No, no, I'm glad you did because some people are like rrr, 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 and start grumbling. <laughs> I know. We, hey, let's rectify it right away. Anyway, we're okay. talking about truth. We're talking about truth. The Greek word again, aletheia, it means reality, the manifested, unconcealed essence of a matter. Um, it is pure, unadulterated reality. That's what truth is. So in order to understand why truth really matters, we have to know what truth really means. Um, and, and I really want to, I kind of touched upon this last week, but I really want to reiterate in and say a little bit more about the fact that, you know, in this society, who's with me, you hear my truth. Well, that's my truth. Well, that's your truth. Mm -hmm. Well, that's their truth. Oh, look at the baby. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. um, so grandma wants some more grandkids. That's all. That's all that is. <laughs> Um, that's what we hear a lot, right? Or that's your, well, that's your truth. Well, that works for you. Uh, let me tell me something. Can, can two things, can, can something be yes and no at the same time? No. No. Anything be yes and, and, and no at the same time? No. Uh, can two plus two equal four to Cherise? And, but equal six to Marcy, and they both no. be right. No. Nope. No. Two plus two equals four because that's what matches the reality. Mm -hmm. I have two pins here. You can't really see in my messed up video, but I have two pins here. So I'm going to do one, two, three. I think there are three. I want there to be three pins. And what are you guys going to say? Sherry, you want to tell me? <laughs> you delusional, Laurel. There's only yeah. two. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa will get straight to the point. <laughs> uh -huh. And um, so there are just some things. There's, there's no my truth, your truth, their truth, especially if things are completely opposite of each other. Too, you know, A can't be B and not B at the same time. A can't be B and not be at the same time, right? That's just a logical fallacy. Um, mm. Truth truth is, is not subjective. It is objective. That's, that's what these definitions are basically coming down to. Truth matches reality. Truth matches fact. And facts and reality are not fluid. They don't, they don't change. That means since God, since we just saw in John 17, 17, God's word is truth, then God's word doesn't change. It doesn't, it doesn't flex. It doesn't change from one culture to the next. It doesn't change from, from ancient, uh, ancient times to the 1950s to the 21st century. Truth is constant. Truth is is real, it is objective, it is not based upon our experiences. And that's gonna come in you know, yeah. tipping, my, tipping my hand a little bit uh, when we talk about uh, marriage in the next uh, series in February. Um, I'm tipping my hand a little bit that there's, as I mentioned, there's, there's been a lot of talking on Facebook anyway about marriage lately, just like, out of the blue, I came up with this topic uh, for February before people started talking about this all over <laughs> Facebook about marriage and relationships and men and women and all that. Um, so, and what I'm seeing is a lot of people. Well, you know, that may be true when when I share and some of some of my comments on these posts and I share, you know, well, this is what Ephesians five says, just for instance. And, you know, this is what, you know, God had ordained and intended. And then the, the feedback is, well, you know, I agree, but that's the ideal. And that's not my experience. 
well, truth doesn't change just because you haven't experienced the ideal situation. Truth is truth. And if you just say in marriage, if you're having problems in your marriage and it's not, you know, and you, you say you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. Um, and if you are, then I need to be learning from you because <laughs> I don't know any <sighs> always, except for Sherry, but that's always doing, <laughs> what, <Thank you. laughs> always doing what we're supposed to be doing. So it's not that God's word is wrong. But that maybe we're, you know, the problem isn't God's word. God's word is true. So whatever he says about any aspect of our lives, if we're having trouble, if, it, if, it, if it's not turning out the way we expected, um, and even if it is, you know, it's not because we experience it. We experience God's word. And, it, and our experience will... will um, we may not experience it exactly the way that we expect, but the point is, again, I'm, I'm going to beat a dead horse, but we do not, our experiences do not determine truth. We interpret our experiences by the word of God. And we adjust, we adjust ourselves accordingly. We don't adjust God's word to fit our experiences. Any questions on that? Any 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 comments? Mm -hmm. Yvette, yes. I got a quick story, just okay. real, real quick. Yeah. Um, we moved in here where we're staying right now. Uh -huh. My son and my daughter-in-law. Yeah. And um, we had a big blow up one day last week about my dog sitting on their couch. That wasn't planned or wasn't okay with us that she did that, but she did it. And we realized she was up there my daughter-in-law walked in. So, okay, so okay, let me stop you there for just a second. You know we are recording. Yeah. Okay, sure. I just always like to, you know, go ahead. This is the truth. <laughs> my my daughter-in-law walked in, mm -hmm. so she got real snippy with Robert. Okay. And, um, they argued a little bit, and then she went to her room. And me and Robert was flabbergasted. Like, what? You know, but anyway, the next day, nobody was talking to each other. And uh, that the next day at night, they were fixing to go somewhere. And Robert said something to Jarrell. So they both blew up. Jarrell was just hollering. And Robert said, Why are you talking so loud? I'm standing right here. Because you and change that. Then, um, uh, Jarrell said, well, mama is a liar. Mm. What? How did I get in? And I was that so untrue. Every time she has a headache, she don't go somewhere. And she don't go somewhere a lot. Boy, you don't get out of here. I said, I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. I've been having headaches since before you were the Jarrell. <laughs> you know, Yep. And that's where we are right now. He won't speak to me unless he's just saying hi. He ain't apologize to either one of them. Well, but that's the truth. That is the truth. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what happened. That's, that's the, the... But they would tell you something different. What's that? They would tell you something different. Okay, but we're, we, I'm familiar with the situation. So I'm going, but thank you for uh, sharing that. And of course, I thought everybody needed to know I'm a liar. You're not a liar. No, no, no. You know if you're a liar, God knows if you're a liar. Yeah. Um, but we have, we cannot have any opinion on it, right, ladies? Because we weren't, oh, we wasn't there. And, right. Oh, wish I was. And and you know, and and Jarrell would say, well, so was so was Jarrell, you know, so was I there, but. Um, and I guess that reminds me, Yvette, what I said last week that I want to say again. This, this examination of why truth really matters is for us to turn our eyeballs inward, to look at ourselves, keep ourselves in check. And so that, um, even Yvette just sharing that, that um, 
what happened last week with her son and daughter-in-law um, is a reminder to me, like, okay, I don't, if anybody's going to call Laurel a liar, let them be a liar. But that's, that's on me to make sure that, you know, I, that I try my best never to lie. Now we mm-hmm. talked about last week, <laughs> right, Marcy? <laughs> <laughs> and Lee yes. um, and Sherry was there too. And sorry if I'm leaving anybody else out, but we talked la- last week about how, wow, it, sometimes it's just hard. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's just, it's so much easier to lie, at least in the short term. Mm-hmm. We're going to find out uh-huh. tonight that there are consequences to lying, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but thanks again, uh, Yvette, for sharing that, that story. Oh, sure. We all give, you know, we all deal with each other based upon the honor system, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Yvette, I've, I've never known Yvette. I've known you for many years. I've never known Yvette to lie to me. Now, has she? She and God know. Right. <laughs> but I have no reason not to, you know, not to give her the benefit of the doubt. And same with everybody else. We put it, we give each other the benefit of the doubt. And then if we do feel somebody's lied to us, we we, you know, deal with it according to the truth of God's word regarding how we approach somebody that's caught in sin, like Galatians 6, 1, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, um, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, I've all turned in, lest you also be tempted. So there, you know, we just, we just want to make sure we're keeping ourselves in check. And that's, mm-hmm. why, ergo, we have... <laughs> you know, this, this study on why truth really matters and how do we apply God's truth to our daily lives. Right. All right. Uh, so last week um, we talked about, the, again, this is seven reasons why truth really matters. We talked about uh, the first four. Um, I said this last week, there are probably a zillion reasons why truth really matters. I'm just dealing with seven of them. Okay, so this is not obviously an exhaustive study on all the reasons why truth matters. Uh, So the first one is God's word, the Bible is true. So we just saw that in John 17, 17. Um, it It is flawless. God's word is flawless, which means truth is flawless. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, and also because it is, um, God's word, the Bible is truth. Uh, let's let's go ahead and turn again to Second Timothy three, um, Second Timothy three, and if you're there before me, please read Second Timothy three, uh, verses sixteen and seventeen. All Scripture is inspired by God and beneficial for teaching, for rebuke, for cor- correction, for training in righteousness so that the man or woman of God may be fully capable, equipped for every good work. Yes. And that is from the New American Standard. Okay. Does it say woman? Um, In um, italics. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. So God's word, the Bible is truth and it's profitable. That's the point. It is because his word, because it's, because it's inspired as 2 Timothy 3.16 says, then it is, uh, we can have confidence in it. And that's why I, you know, encourage us to read the Bible every day, read and study the Bible, become a true Bible student. You, not that, like you, you know, have to go to school or seminary for it or something, but it's just, you know, have, have a love, a, a love for truth means that you love God's word because God's word is true. The second oh. reason, I'm sorry? Always. Always, yes. Um, I'm sorry. I have to put you on hold. My mother is calling, and this is, I was hoping she'd just leave a message, but you guys uh, just talk amongst yourself for just a second. Okay. Thank you. Okay, everybody who has a cute baby, put it on the screen. Toretto. 
<laughs> Why is your cute, cute baby? What did you say? <laughs> he's, Nicole? he's trying to take a nap, so. Oh, okay. Nicole? Oh. Oh. <laughs> baby alert. <laughs> baby alert. <laughs> oh, my Thanks, ladies. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, for those of you who don't know, my, my stepfather passed on Christmas Eve. So when my mother, I haven't talked to her in, in almost, well, about a week and, or so. And so when she's called, she's fine. Um, but I just want to make sure she was okay. Uh, okay, we took a baby break while you were gone. <laughs> okay. He's a cutie. Uh, all right. Um, so... We are at the, oh, I just wanted to say about uh, the first reason God, that truth really matters. God's word, the Bible is truth. Um, so for us as Christian women, we should be looking at the scriptures for guidance about holiness, prayer, worship, marriage, parenting. Um, we want to follow the truth, not the world's way. Right. Not our experiences, not subjective subjective uh, so-called truth but we want to follow god's truth the world's way may seem better may seem more logical or make more sense it is certainly the path of least resistance but it's the world's way god's way is what's ideal and what is most protective uh, for us as his children and as daughters. Uh, the second reason why truth really matters is truth is trustworthy. That's what we talked about also last week. Um, the Lord uh, is our God of truth who cannot lie. Okay, we've seen that in Deuteronomy 32.4. We won't turn there. Um, everything he does is true and consistent. Excuse me, his truth endures forever. And it just in terms of application, it's like how comforting to know that God's truth is one of the most powerful things that we can lay hold to in this life as Christians trying to live godly in an ungodly world. Um, God's truth will not steer us wrong. It is reliable. We can surrender ourselves to it. You know, uh, we can with confidence, we can surrender ourselves to the truth of God's word. It, it, his truth is stable. It is sure. It does not change, as I mentioned. Um, so when we're witnessing the gospel, just as an example, and we get, you know, pushed back or, or, or attacked because of it, we can still stand strong, uh, regardless of how people react or don't react to it, because it is, um, because it's truth. <laughs> it is unconcealed reality. The third reason why truth really matters is truth saves us. Uh, and so uh, John 17, 17 that we just read, uh, believers are sanctified by the truth. We're set apart by the truth. The, God's word and the truth of it cleanses us, right? Um, and what did, and then in addition to that, what did, what did uh, Jesus tell Pilate? Everyone, this is in John 18, 37. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Um, and why his voice? Because not only is Jesus the very embodiment of truth, we see that in John 1, 14, the word became flesh. So not only is Jesus the embodiment of truth, he is the only embodiment of it because he is the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6. And what does the rest of that passage say? No man goes through the Father except by me. And who's me? Jesus. Jesus. What? The way, the truth, and the life. So truth, God's truth saves us, saves us for eternity, saves us from the penalty of our sins. Um, therefore, only those who accept Jesus accept the truth. And only those who accept the truth receive salvation unto eternal life. Mm -hmm. um, again, you can look at John 14, 6 and compare that with John 14, uh, 1, 14 and, and 17. Um, now, sure, it's by 
faith that we believe we are saved, but it's rational. Um, for example, either Jesus said gave this, it's called a Pascal's wager, I think it is. Either Jesus is who he said he is, namely the way, the truth, and the life, namely, you know, God in the flesh, uh, namely, uh, before Abraham was, I am. I mean, Jesus claimed to be God. Either he he is who he said he is, or he was crazy, say, to going around to, for three years talking this crap, which we know it wasn't. But either he's crazy or he's a liar. Either he's God or he's crazy or a liar. And we know that he's not a liar. He is God who cannot lie, as we saw earlier. Um, so truth saves us. And that's a very huge reason why truth really matters. The fourth reason why truth re really matters is truth protects us. Um, we talked about that last week. Uh, let's turn to Ephesians 6. That's a long review, but I think it's worth it um, just to reiterate some of these things. Truth protects us. Ephesians 6, uh, 14 through 17. And I will uh, quickly read this out of the, uh, this is the New American Standard. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then it goes on, <coughs> excuse me. But what's that, the first piece of that armor? Helmet. Saying? Truth. Helmet. Truth. Girded your waist. Oh, girded waist. Yeah, waist with truth. Mm -hmm. And you think about your waist, right? What oh. about the personal trainers say, you know, that's your core. The strength of the whole body relies on the core. The core. Mm. And I just thought about that. And, some, you know, it's not some great, well, you know, epiphany or anything. <laughs> but I think that, you know, I, I think that's why perhaps it's the waist, not the mm. elbow. <laughs> okay. The elbow, elbow shield of truth. No, it's the waist. Gird yourself. Gird mm. your truth. That's at the core, the core of it. Um, so also the upright person who speaks the truth in his heart will abide with the heavenly father. That's Psalm 15, one and two. Even the greatest kind of love, love that never fails, that protects our joy because it rejoices in the truth. The greatest kind of love protects our joy because it rejoices in the truth. That's 1 Corinthians 6. So again, nothing can knock over or discredit God's truth. So when we operate by God's truth in our day-to-day -day lives as, his, as Christian women, we can't, be, um, we can't be discredited ourselves. Now, people will try. They will say, well, my experience is, or I've heard this a lot. Well, you know, I've, I've studied this a long time. <laughs> like okay two plus two equals four whether you know a five-year-old knows it or or a phd mathematician knows it two plus two a five-year-old can can be you know just as sure as somebody that's that's been studying math for ages um so it's truth is truth no matter how when how can i say this truth is truth it, it, whether everybody believes it or nobody believes it, truth doesn't, the, the reality or the credibility of truth does not rely on how many people know it, know that truth or believe that truth. If none of us believe that Jesus is Lord, is Jesus still Lord? Yep. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because wasn't there a point that all of us ladies here, all 15 of us, at some point, some of us, or if not all of us, did not believe in Jesus, whether you came to Christ at five years old or like me, a junior in college or later in life. So God's truth does not rely on who believes it. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen.
And if anybody pushes back on it, well, I just don't believe that. Okay, well, your fight is with God, not me. I'm just not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can I can point to black and white and show you. You know, and it's not. They don't want to say it. They know some don't. But some do, and we pray, Lord, send those. Yeah, exactly. And and some of you know, you know, I've been praying for the salvation of my family members since I got yes. in 1984. Right. Keep praying. And, I'm, mm -hmm. and as long as they have breath, I'm going to keep praying. Yeah, right. yeah. Keep praying. We are. Of, what's that? We pray for your family every night too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I've and I've had pushback even recently I'm from the passing of my stepfather. Yeah. I still get we still get pushback. Um, yeah. you know, uh, but I, you know, as you and I, how do we operate in the truth that um, that the truth protects us? I'm not worried about my credibility. Because my because true God's truth has all the credibility. So even when the fight, you know, it's like, hey, my conscience is clear. After all the thirty eight years, I've shared the gospel with you and and and, and tried to live it before you, not perfectly. Mm -hmm. My conscience is now clear because I've shared it. I've I've tried to live it in front of you. Mm -hmm. I've, to be, I notice I keep saying try, try, try. <laughs> try not to be hypocritical. One of those, well, you're all Christians are hypocrites. You know, I've heard that too. Well, I try not to, no. you know, but my conscience is clear at this point. And that's what I want us, all of us, to just pay my con your, our conscience about witnessing to loved ones or anybody the gospel, just as an example, or let's say, you know dealing with persecution for submitting to the leadership of our husbands in our home or you know um being being um not wanting to go to uh weddings of same-sex couples you know because we're standing on the truth of god's word and all right. of the, the attack or the you know oh you're just a homophobe or you you don't know how to love like jesus love well okay christians <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm tired of non-Christians telling me how, what, how to be a Christian, number one. <laughs> right. But even if they do, your fight is with God. Mm -hmm. The messenger. And yeah. I was I, I unto the Lord. And I'm encouraging us to stand on the truth of God's word because it protects us from the ridicule, from the hate. Because they don't hate, what did Jesus say? If they hated you, it's because they hated me before they hated you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Just don't do anything to be hated where, where it's pointed at you, you know? Right. If yeah. you suffer for righteousness sake, that's what we, if we want to suffer, let's suffer for righteousness, righteousness sake only. Uh, number five, God hates lying. Truth, truth really matters because God hates lying. Yes. Yeah. Vulnerable to him. Uh, he, uh, we can look at, um, we got just a few more minutes. Uh, Psalm 119. As I love the, the book of Psalm, the, or the um, chapter, this, this Psalm 119, because almost every other word talks about God's law, God's commandments, God's instructions. Um, you know, it's, it's truly, all of God's word is word, are words to live by, but, the, you know, Psalm 119 is, is just the theme is, doctrine and, the, and God's law, his instructions, his commandments, and how the psalmist just, you know, craves that, you know, um, he upholds it. Um, and that's, that's what I want for, my, for myself to be at that point where I can love God's law and not cringe from it sometimes like I do, honestly. But uh, so what, uh, excuse me, uh, Psalm 119, 163. Verse 163, that's a long one. 163 says, I hate and abhor lying, but I love your law. So that is the psalmist saying, I hate and abhor lying, but I love your law. But um, that is an example of, it just goes against God's character. Um, 
because he is his word is true no no lie is of the truth that's first john 2 21 no lie is of the truth because the because the devil in whom there is no truth at all he is the father of lying john that's john 8 44 write these scriptures down please and um and then go back be a Berean and go back and check out the verses of this, this passages I'm re, uh, giving you and check them out in the proper context. Um, but the devil in whom there is no truth, he is the father of lying. And God tells us not to give place to the devil. So if the devil is the father of lying, God tells us not to give place to the devil. That's in Ephesians 4.27. So if we're not not giving uh, the place to the devil means, hey, let's keep ourselves in check about lying. The last scripture uh, where God tells us not to give place to the devil, that's Ephesians 4.27. The one before that, um, the devil is the father of lies, John 8.44. I uh, can't help but think of all the wolves in sheep's clothing today who go about deceiving and being deceived. Mm. First, that's Second Timothy three thirteen. They they are they're being they go about deceiving and being deceived by false doctrines that tickle the ears and fill their own bellies, but emaciate the soul. Mm. God hates lying. Yeah. It is conniving. It is. I mean, the serpent lied to Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, it did. Um, and one thing, one way that the serpent, the, the devil lies is like when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness. He's quoted scripture, didn't he? Mm -hmm. The devil quoted scripture. Yeah. But he quoted it out of context. Yeah. Right. We want to make sure that, you, that, well, truth will always be in its proper context. Yeah. So it's true that matches up with reality. It's going to be in the proper context, especially when it comes to God's word. Mm -hmm. um, and so we should, because God, our heavenly father hates lying, we should detest it as well. Um, now, again, no one is perfect, but our heart's desire should be to be as honest as possible, even when it's hard, mm -hmm. even when it reveals our own fault or weakness. God will meet us more than halfway. He just wants our hearts to be willing to be honest, as honest as possible, um, but knowing that we, you know, don't beat ourselves up because there's nobody perfect. Uh, I got five more minutes. Uh, reason number six that truth really matters. Lying brings more or worse consequences. Um, for, well, and let me say what number seven is, okay? And then I'll go back to number six. But number seven, truth sets us free. Okay, so number six, again, lying brings worse consequences. Reason number seven, truth sets us free. So lying brings worse consequences. Um, e Ecclesiastes 12, 14, and you can compare that to Galatians 6, 7. Just write that down. God shall grant every fruit. I'm sorry, is there Yvette? Yes. Can, we can hear Robert or Jarrell in, in the background. So I'm just letting you know. So I'm going to go ahead and mute you, but um, you won't be able to ask the question. Oh, I think you're done. You're good. Never mind. Sorry. Okay. okay. God will shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay, so we may think quick on our feet. Remember the story I told last week about the boys jumping on the bed and then the dad, come, they break the bed and dad comes in and says, what in the world happened? And they <laughs> lied and said, oh, a man came in and he jumped on our bed and he broke it and he ran out the window. And he says, you don't have a window. And the kid says, well, we, he brought it with him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, <sir. laughs> oh, wow. 
it, it, that makes as funny as all get out, but it, but it makes no sense, right? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> every time we try to cover up the truth, it's going to come back. Yeah, don't know when it's going to come back, and and God may not judge it, judge us about it until we're sitting, you know, um, at, at the judgment seat of Christ, right? When we have to give an account for how we lived our lives here, and you're going to play that one back. Okay, you said that man brought the window with him when he broke your bed and said, "Dad, I'm sorry, we broke the bed." Right. Uh -huh. Short term, you may get away with something thinking quick being clever long term we are all we are all going to have to um we all we will all be one way or the other um in the long term truth even when it hurts it's so much easier to deal with than the complicated chains of lies that each previous lie requires not to mention as i said the consequences uh that god promises will follow Anyone who practices lying, especially the lie that God doesn't exist, faces consequences for eternity. Mm. Sins, including lies, often result in calamities. Um, but all liars are among those who shall have their part in the lake of fire that burns forever. Now, let me say, just because we as Christians say one lie, we're not going to lose our salvation so this, this last scripture, and it's in Revelation 21, 8. all liars are among those who shall have their part in the lake of fire that burns forever. That's talking about people that practice lying, that have, you know, evil in their hearts um, and they practice it. But remember, our Heavenly Father hates lying. We want to make sure that we're not participating in something that God hates and Again, remember, I also said truth protects us. So telling the truth protects us from long-term consequences or having the worst consequence than if we had just told the hard truth to begin with. So let's say just for example, in marriage, try, um, try not to do anything that you have to cover up. Oh, what a wicked web we weave and once we practice to deceive. <laughs> Consequences of lying erode trust, as in marriage, uh, which is, and it's hard to regain that trust. Um, be a woman of your word. I'm going to go uh, one more minute. And if you need to jump off because you're on the East Coast or Midwest or, or Central, feel free to jump off. I'm here for another hour to, to, to answer any questions, talk about any topic um, up to an hour. But I just wanted to finish this last one. So, so what was Ecclesiastics again? Um, for lying brings worse consequences. What was the, what was the? Uh, oh, that was Ecclesiastes 12, 14. 14, okay, thank you. Compared to Galatians 6, 7. Okay. Um, so seven, truth sets us free. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. That's John 8, 31 and 32. The truth, real truth, offers freedom, ladies. Freedom to rest in truth saving grace. Freedom to rely on God's protection in all earthly and spiritual matters of truth. Freedom to think, live, and grow by the guiding wisdom of truth. Freedom to share the truth with others. Freedom to defend the truth. Freedom to search out the truth even when keeping it 100 pushes it pushes against the boundaries of our comfort zone. Sometimes it's hard to hear the truth, right? But even then, it's it it's um, we have freedom to search out the truth. Freedom to love the truth, even when it hurts, knowing that God is still in all things forever faithful. So, ladies, let's be wise and always value the truth in every area of life. Let's value it. I'm going to read one last thing. What I, what I stated last week, if I can find it real quick. Uh, oh, bear with me, bear with me. It's one thing to not know the truth. 
or not to be aware of the truth in any given situation or context. It is entirely something else to not value the truth. Only a foolish person devalues the truth. The wise person will appreciate the truth by seeking it out, loving it, keeping it close, and standing up for it. The fool will ignore the truth, deny it, twist it, embellish it, pervert it, or in some other way reject it. Let's love the truth. Any questions? Amen. 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 Now, Again, I'm here for up to uh, you know the, another hour. Um, it's optional, but I always like to you know have uh, further discussion if anybody wants to discuss this topic or any other topic. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm gonna drop off. So good night, everybody. If you guys can do me a favor, Good night, everyone. Um, before you guys leave, if you guys can do me a favor, just to keep me in your prayers. Uh, we had a round of layoffs at Biola University, and I was one of the ones who got let go. So mm -hmm. I need to figure out what it is I'm doing okay. by way of staying with financial aid, trying to find another job um, at another university. Um, right now, I'm just praying that God would lead and, yes. and, and and tell me what to do next and i'm in the process of getting my resume to, together and cover letters together and yeah that um, whole job not, search thing and trying not to be stressed out um yes. i'm um we'll be i have until february 1st um that february 1st is my last day but of course i would like to True. i'm being impatient and i would like to have everything resolved right now but please mm -hmm. pray for me that yes. god will just lead Thank you for sharing that. All right. So, Marcy, um, last yes. week you you had mentioned, did you ever tell your coworker that you didn't like her food? <laughs> it wasn't my coworker. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it wasn't a coworker. Oh, okay. It was <laughs> Well, did you ever tell the, remember what we talked about, did you ever tell the person? That you, no, because I would have had to call them and and tell them, like, they didn't ask about it again, so no, I, I never told them that. Okay. I, it wasn't terrible, though, it just wasn't the best I've had, it was, okay. yeah, what so, was no, I didn't confess. Okay. <laughs> what did you say, D'Angela? I was asking, what was it? What kind of food was it? Yeah. Well. <laughs> Uh-oh. Should I stop recording? Hey. Yes. Well, it's Wait. the thing. What's so funny about it? Yeah. Oh, that might be right. Let her take the record button off. Do you want me to stop recording? Because I wish last week was recorded. When my okay, so the conversation, but he's not here <laughs> this time. But Bye, that was man. good. But anyway. Well, see. Okay, so it was not a friend. It was it was I will stop recording. It was